Hi there, welcome to this workshop. You are watching the video Comparison between Piping Design Codes EN13480 and ASMIB31. My name is Javier Tirenti, I am the Director of Urban Training and Engineering. I hope you enjoy this workshop. The EN13480 and ASMIB31 codes are frequently used for the design of piping systems. The rules of these codes are often applied using automated software packages, and the engineer might lose sight of the calculation being performed on the background. In any case, are there significant differences between the fundamental equations and principles in the design rules? How is the allowable stress calculated? Why should certain load cases be analyzed? Are these materials equivalent? Before switching between design codes, the similarities and differences need to be evaluated in order to avoid unpleasant surprises. Comparison between design codes EN13480 and ASMIB31. The EN13480 is a more comprehensive piping design code than ASMIB31 code with respect to stress analysis, while the ASMIB31 code leaves the designer to decide how to calculate some loads, the EN13480 code has better guidance and specific requirements, equations, procedures, etc. The EN13480 code is more stringent with regard to the design of supports that are welded to the pipe, mainly due to the wall thickness of the pipe and the induced stresses. The European Piping Code also requires a third party to perform an analysis of piping and support systems before assembly and commissioning can be done. This third-party verification is rarely the case in fast-track industrial projects, based on the ASMIB31.3 code. Third-party verification is rarely completely before mechanical completion, and therefore any findings at the end of the project can lead to a large modification to already installed pipe and equipment. Let's give it a closer look to the main differences between these two design codes. Let's start with materials. The ASPB31 code presents a wide variety of materials. Both metallic and non-metallic materials are available. In this case, the EN13480 code presents metallic materials only and currently restricted to steel. Regarding the scope of these design codes, the ASMIB31 code has different scopes included in the different parts of the code. For example, power generation, power piping, process plants, as in process piping, and hydrocarbon transportation for pipelines. In this case, the EN13480, it is not applicable to pipelines not applicable to nuclear plants either, not applicable to blast furnaces pipes, and not applicable to internal pipes of boilers. Regarding the services and fluids, the ASMIB31 code has different categories, uh, for example category D for non-flammable, non-toxic fluids, Category M for flammable and toxic fluids and high temperature and high pressure services. 
the EN13480 code has two groups. Group 1 for explosive, flammable, highly flammable, toxic or highly toxic fluids and group 2 for the rest of fluids, including steam. As for stresses, the ASMIB31 code present all the stresses, the allowable stresses for the different applications and materials listed. Obviously the stresses depend on the yield and tensile strength. In the case of the EN13480, the allowable stress is obtained through an equation based on the yield and tensile strength. Wall thickness. The ASMIB31 code presents the all the equations necessary to obtain the thickness of thin walled pipes. However, this code does not present equations to obtain the thickness of thick walled pipes. Therefore, special verifications are needed. In this case, the EN13480 code does present both equations for thin and thick walled piping. Equations for thick walled piping are based on the equations of Lame. Regarding fittings, for the ASMIB31 code, standard fittings are used. Meanwhile, for the EN13480, the wool thickness of all fittings needs to be verified. All calculations and equations are provided within the code. Sustain loads. In the ASMIB31 code, loads are addressed in a more detailed way. Whereas, in the EN13480 code, a simpler analysis is applied. Displacement loads. There is a different approach regarding the displacement stresses. This is mainly due to the basic load stress being calculated or obtained in a different way. Regarding the sieve factors, the ASMIB31 code has different sieve for every part or section of the code B311, B313, etc. In this case, the EN13480 code presents different C factors depending on the service. There are different actual stresses due to pressure and loads. In terms of advantages, the ASMIB31 code is accepted worldwide. The signs are proven and reliable. On the other hand, the EN13480 code fully complies with the Pressure Equipment Directive. Generally, low-pressure systems are less expensive. Regarding the disadvantages, the ASMEB31 code does not fully comply with the Pressure Equipment Directive. Whereas, the EN13480 code, um, the fittings are still nowadays difficult to find, even in some European markets. ASMI B31 code. The ASMI B31 piping code contains basic requirements regarding the integrity of the piping system. However, leaving some other aspects of the functional system design to the designer. The codes have been developed for a large number of different applications, hence the difficulty in defining certain aspects. The code does not fully define all the stress calculations that should be performed. Therefore, Several textbooks and articles have been published on how to understand the ASMIB31 code. 
some of them even published by committee members, for example, the ASMEB31 CASTI Practical Guide. Many engineering companies also have their own procedure for conducting stress analysis on pipes, due to the lack of guidance from the B31 code as could be desirable. For example, how are piping systems designed with respect to exceptional or accidental design loads from an explosion? The ASME B31-3 code does not give any guidelines. EN13-480 standard It is important to understand the hierarchy of the European standards. Many of the European standards are absorbed or inherited from the ISO standards. Just, just as a reference, we have to bear in mind that 30% of the EN standards portfolio is identical to ISO standards. The intention of the EN13480 code for piping systems was to harmonize a large number of European national piping codes to meet the essential safety requirements of the new European Pressure Equipment Directive PED. In other words, establish a single framework for all members of the European community. European countries have converted the EN13480 design code into a national pipeline standard by adding letter codes from national standards. Some examples are the following BS EN13480 British Piping Standard or DIN EN13480 German Piping Standard. In order to work with the EN13480 standard, there are many other references and other standards that need to be considered when designing a piping system. For starters, the EN13480 code is formed by eight parts. Part number one is, are the general aspects. Part number two, the materials section. Part number three, the design section. Part number four, the fabrication and installation section, part number 5, the inspection and NDT, part number 6, underground piping systems, part number 7, it is the conformity, conformity assessment, and part number 8, piping systems designed with aluminum. Obviously, there is also the fittings section or the fittings um, standards, relevant standards that need to be consulted, flanges section or flanges standards, flat products, general specifications, materials, NDT standards that need to be consulted, pipe standards, valves and welding requirements. At the same time, there are some other standards that could be useful when designing piping systems according to the EN13480 code. For example, the ISO standards for the oil and gas industry. There are some standards that may be useful, uh, for example, the ISO 14692 standard for the design of GRP piping parts, or for example, the ISO 21457 that is dedicated to material selection in oil and gas industries. And we could name some others that are also applicable to industrial processes and industrial plants. 
such as centrifugal pumps, shell and tube heat exchangers, etc. Finally, it is worth mentioning some material equivalences. It is important to establish the material equivalences between these two design codes. There are many publications fully dedicated to establishing the material equivalences between these two design codes. One of the most important aspects are the pipes. We can see on the screen one publication made by one German supplier, Rohr Flange and Fitting, that is indicating the main grades used in both uh, designations, ASME and European designation. We, we also find flanges for these typical materials and design codes, bad welding fittings, pipes in stainless steel with all the grades that are equivalent, flanges in stainless steel, and lastly, bad welding fittings in stainless steel. I hope you have enjoyed this workshop. Please do not hesitate to get in touch with me for any question you may have. Have a great day 